welcome to Driving to the Race with Inelia and Larry. Hi. Hi, we're here. We're here. We're actually driving away from the race right now. We're going we're, to Portland. We're going to Portland. We only found out we needed to go to Portland last thing uh, last night. Yeah, last night at the book club. At the book club at Walk With Me Now. I where we reading, we were reading the Interview last with an Angel. Mind blowing chapter of Interview with an Angel. Yeah, if, if you don't remember that chapter, read it again because nobody on the call remembered it until they had to read it again for the book club. And even then, they stood there a little bit dazed and confused quite often. Yeah, so really, one of the really interesting things about that chapter, I don't know, once you read it again, you'll find out that it's full of typos. And that chapter was proofread by, I can't remember now, it's either four or five people, one of them a professional proofreader. Yeah, professional. And, um, yeah, it's still full of typos. <laughs> because it puts you in an extremely altered state and it expands your awareness field and, and blows out your reality so far <laughs> that the typos just become invisible or something I don't know what happened but yeah that chapter is full of typos <laughs> very funny anyways when we were doing that call last night Larry got a call or a text or something from his got son in California from, got an email from Stanford saying oh, yeah. you need to get your kids out of here ASAP yeah he got an email from Stanford University in California United States of America telling him he has to get his kid out of there ASAP because they're closing Stanford due to the coronavirus thing the corona panic thing the corona <laughs> panic not pandemic, pandemic. Uh, it's not pandemic it's panic so yeah what somebody said that to me today it's not a pandemic it's a panic and I thought oh yeah <laughs> totally right know who you are <laughs> so anyways um, so we're on our way to Portland to collect him so we're driving away from the res but later on we'll be driving to the res so Kinda on goes. a very long winded way we're driving to the res <laughs> anyways we're recording this today um, it is March the 14th, March the 14th, 2020. It was Larry's idea and I thought it was a brilliant idea. I do, I've been trained and I do card magic and I do card readings and um, and I like to educate people too about cards and how to do them. So he had this brilliant idea about through this crisis with regards to the social breakdown of society uh, through this panic thing and what's going to come and all that. There's a lot of stuff going up in the air. There's a lot of people's lives that are changing either temporarily and then sometimes also forever. going to be changing forever as structures become obsolete and people realize, wait, <laughs> The system is not quite right, you know, and staying home and educating your own kids is kind of the not way to go, man. It's bad. Nice. Yeah. So, and we don't know what other agendas are running. Uh, like I said in our previous podcast, don't fall into the victim aggressor stuff. Know that how you experience this reality, no matter what's going on, is very much to do with you. You're empowered. Yeah, I remember that we were listening to the little bit of at the beginning was the um, lucid dreaming. You know, we all are familiar with lucid dreaming, but this boy was teaching lucid living, so it does matter. We were listening to a podcast where this person was talking about lucid living, and funnily enough, during the book club yesterday... Talking about? We were talking about lucid living <laughs> yes. in different words, but different that's words, what it was. Same, yeah. same. Basically, 
this is a dream, wake up in it. Once you wake up within the dream, you're able to control the red dream and able to manifest the experience that you really want here. So, going back to this card reading, um, Larry's idea was to have a spread, you know, thinking to a three card spread of where should we focus our minds on during this time. And if it's a year later, or a few months later, or a few weeks later, or a few days later, after this podcast was published and you're listening to this now, in, your fut- in my future, but your present, know that nothing is an accident. So you're listening to where to focus your mind and your energy for the next while, right? Let's say, what, how long should we do, like a month, a week? Two weeks. Two weeks, okay. Focus so, for the next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. So that's part of the reading skill. The first thing you do is, well, first of all, you have a question. That's why you go to the cards, right? So the clearer, the more precise, the more detailed the question, the better your reading is going to be. So for us, on this reading, it's going to be where should we focus our attention and our energy and our focus for the next two weeks, period. To, for high frequency purposes, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, for high frequency purposes. We're not asking where to focus our attention to make our life terrible. We're making, we're wanting to focus our attention to navigate this period of time the next couple of weeks in a high frequency high empowered frequency way right. okay in a high frequency empowered way that's going to a staple for us we do yeah. everything and all the information we share with you and all the talks we share with you all the podcasts my website sineliabenz.com my, my platform and forum walkwithmenow.com and my future my coming pages my academy abensacademy.com all of these default into creating a situation where you can create an experience that is high frequency and highly empowered that's the default okay so know that that's our default here we put all our work this is our default so as the educational cards reading goes the next thing we decide is who are we asking okay who are we going to ask this question from so larry do you have any ideas who we should use for this card reading you know i always have the same answer to that question <laughs> larry always has the same answer to that question he always asks gaia okay so let me just tap into that Well, there's a competition going on. Gaia's always very happy to give us information and guidance. But I'm also getting a very strong pull to ask the high frequency human collective consciousness. Because that interesting. because it has to do with us as a human collective and a worldwide shifting of um, structures. So would it be synonymous synonymous with asking the Lemurian Lemurian collective? No. Because they're a high-frequency human collective? Yeah, they're part of it, but they're not the only part of the high-frequency human collective. They're not the only ones. But they are a high-frequency human collective? They are a group within the high-frequency human collective, yeah. I, I feel a little bit resistant to ask a collective that is not presently experiencing what we're experiencing to give us advice on what we're experiencing. So, so I like to include a collective or a being or entity that is part of our everyday reality. So to me, to separate the high frequency human collective into a tiny little group, which is the Lemurians, doesn't feel resonant. So we'll exclude the high-frequency human collectives that are not on the planet 
Earth too. I don't like to exclude, I like to include. I don't well, we're like just excluded the Lemurians, or are we no, including no, no. them within it? I'm not excluding them at all. I said I don't want to uh, separate it into just them, right? I don't want to be just them, because it's a very small group within the high frequency human collective, which is not just on the planet, but all over the universe. Okay. And it is not a collective that has a direct experience of what we're going through right now. I thought the Lemurians had a direct experience of going through a split. They are through a split, but not through a coronavirus. Oh, well, I thought the, the coronavirus was having to stay home. a split experience, a physical split. Or of them having to stay home. People saying to stay home or bringing their children home or, you know, running out of toilet paper. It's not an experience they, they know or have or taken part in. Or are taking part in, right? Right. Singularly, as part of the high frequency collective of the universe, obviously we're part of that too. So everyone there does have that experience, but it's like if you want to get um, a recipe for good poached eggs, you don't go to your mechanic, right? Right, but we're including our mechanics when we're asking about this. Because we're including everyone on the human collective, which is vast and Yeah, we are enormous. including the mechanics, but we're not asking only the mechanics. Gotcha. So for me, asking just the Lemurians means you're asking just the mechanics how to poach eggs. Ah, uh, okay. And Sorry. some mechanics, I'm sure, are very good cooks, and they can tell you exactly how to poach an egg. Some of them are really good at YouTube, so they could probably YouTube it too. But limiting it to just mechanics is not a good idea. Okay. In my opinion. So no Gaia. Picking the high frequency human collective in the universe as our source of uh, connection for the cards. That feels resonant. Okay. Let's see what they have to say. What we could do is, uh, because I was actually thinking of doing a three card spread. Yeah. What we could do is do one card that is. Um, the card that the high frequency human collective in the universe is showing us to concentrate or look at for the next week, two weeks, um, when it comes to, you know, what to focus on yeah. during this period of time. And then the second card, we could ask Gaia the same question. Oh, oh that's right? nice. And then the third card, if you want to, we could ask the Lemurians, go to the mechanics man. That sounds fun. <laughs> Alright, do we agree on that? Because we have yes. to have agreement. Yes. Uh, yes, that sounds fantastic. Yes. Yeah, okay, I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to move it. Okay. <laughs> We've never had to move it. Yeah. Alright. I was moving the recording device over to Larry so he could speak into it, but he said, we never have to move it. But yeah. I can't quite hear him today, so... I think your ears are, your ears are plugged up. Oh no, do I have coronavirus clogged up my ears? You have corona ears. I have corona ears. Corona ears, that's the first sign. It's the first sign of yeah. imminent death. Or it could be that we didn't eat breakfast. <laughs> We're just grabby. <laughs> We're crabby, so I can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's generally oh, wait, wait, how it wait, works. Wait. We're crabby, <laughs> so you're not speaking loudly enough for anyone to hear you. There you go. There you go. So you have an yeah. excuse to be annoying. Yes. There you go. I, I now have we got it. Now, now we, have, we got it. I have excuses to be annoyed. All right. So the first card is to the high frequency. Human collective in the universe. What should we focus on? 
what should we focus on as a species here on the planet for the next two weeks? Yes. Okay, so that's clear enough. All right, I'm using a card uh, deck by Rebecca Campbell and the artwork is done by Danielle Noel. It's called Work Your Light Oracle Cards. It's a beautiful deck. We recently purchased it and we're very happy with it. So this is the deck that we're using for this particular call. I'm shuffling the cards right now. So we're asking the Human Collective to show us what to focus on. As you shuffle the card, you ask the question and you connect with the collective or the entity that you're asking. And then eventually you're going to get a, yep, that's, where, that's it, that's where it is. You feel the full connection, you feel everything's totally resonant and feels right. I generally get surprised by the card. The card just pops out and I'm like, oh, that's the one. I don't know how you do it, but for me, it's almost a surprise. Yeah. That's one way to do it, for sure. Just shuffle until a card falls out. I prefer to shuffle a bit slower and I just feel the, the resonance to it. And once, that, once I feel that frequency, then I stop and I pull the top card out. So as I start feeling into the question, each part becomes, because click, click, click. At the moment we have a click on the high frequency human collective is click. And we have the, the question is clicked. And now I'm waiting for the click that says, it's a card that guides us, our human collective here on the planet. Everybody listening to this. Cool. Where can we focus our? What should we focus on for the next two weeks during this crisis? Okay, I got the last click. Oh, nice. Okay, so the card is called Trust in Niggle. <laughs> Trust in Niggle? Yes. What I don't is know the what niggling, a niggle is. What is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? Ooh. Okay. Got a niggling feeling. The Ooh. card is very beautiful. It's had three ladies, one with their, two with their eyes closed and one with their eyes open. Um, maybe we will post, I don't know actually, we can post a picture of it because it's copyrighted so we probably can't but I'm sure you can google it <laughs> or we'll try it and if the person you know I think they wouldn't complain I think they'd be happy to um, have their cards advertised probably yeah what we'll do is we'll put the photograph with this um, call all three cards we'll put it out with her name and uh, link to her work I suppose that'll be good Probably, or at the very worst, we'll just put it on Walk With Me Now, because that's a private forum. Oh yeah, we can put the pictures on Walk With Me Now. <laughs> that might be best. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right, so, trust in Nicole. That's an interesting uh, thing to focus on, is trusting your intuition. What does your intuition tell you you should be doing, right? The, niggle, the little niggling feeling is saying, it says, this, that, or the other. What is that niggling feeling originating from your fear or from your uh, high frequency side? Which which niggle are you going to listen to? Anyway, I'm sure it's your light side. Yeah. And I think that you said a word there that is key here is your intuition, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me read you the the explanation for the card. The, that niggling feeling that annoying niggling feeling 
that inconvenient, annoying, niggling feeling. Trust you might, it's there. And it ain't going anywhere. Most people spend years ignoring their niggling feelings, throwing their best dollops of stubbornness, ego, and post-rationalization to numb them out. It's exhausting. And until you face the niggle, life just throws you more bait to awaken to it. To draw your attention to the light within you that is bursting to come out. The niggle is an arrow pointing to what is standing in your way. The relationship, the conversation, the decision, the shift that needs to be made. The stone in your shoe. Often we feel the niggling feeling in our body first. Many people think that intuition is something from higher realms, but in fact it is the body that is the intuitive one, working through our senses to deliver vibrational information. It takes just a moment every day to scan your body to receive the intuitive intelligence and act on it quickly. You're being called to face the niggle now. If you don't face it, the universe will throw something much bigger and more obvious in your path. And then you will likely regret that you didn't answer the niggle in the first place. I know it's scary, but you are safe. Answer the niggle now. Wow. And the question and the focus that you should be working on is, what is your niggling feeling trying to tell you? <laughs> That's a really good, really good card from that. Massive human collective. <laughs> yes. It's like, if this ain't enough, we'll throw something bigger. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. And remember that it'll affect you to the degree that you subscribe to it. So, like I've said many times before, never take decisions out of fear. And also, don't let fear rule you. Okay? The more afraid you are through this period of time, the worst time you're going to have. So process your fear. You can find the fear processing exercise at my website, ineliabenz.com. Go get it. It's all text. The full text is there. Print it out. Record it in your voice. Do it. Or even read it out loud and do it as you read it. Or you can download the recording that I made for it. So do it. Do the fear processing exercise and figure out what is your intuition telling you about the situation, right? So Larry, in your personal perspective, what would you say your niggling feeling is and how are you going to, how are you listening to it? Well, my niggling feeling was uh, really actually today, you know, you don't have to do that. Today it had to do with um, making sure my family was safe and together. Didn't want them all spread all over the planet. I wasn't afraid of them getting, uh, you know, hurt or injured or sick or any of that. I just didn't want them quarantined off by somebody somewhere else and stuck, not able to move. I'd rather they were within my envelope. I guess I could make my envelope bigger. But I had a niggling feeling. Cameron, get your butt home. So I'm responding to that niggling feeling. That was my niggle today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're driving to Portland to pick him up from the airport. And driving him to the res. <laughs> driving him to the res. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Up until last night. I was fine with him going to Puerto Rico or Jamaica or travel wherever he, he wants to. But last night I had a niggling feeling. It's like, no, I think it's just time to come home. Was that before or after you got the email? That was, uh, for some reason, he randomly, uh, randomly, uh, what's that? No, he doesn't use WhatsApp, he uses Snapchat. We randomly Snapchatted last night. And as we were Snapchatting, the information came. Uh, there was a Facebook picture I sent him about uh, that he had to make his choice by Wednesday to stay or leave. That's in, you know, a week. So it was basically through the weekend and then a few more days. 
and then uh, we were talking about it, and he said he'd just gotten an e email, so I checked my email, and I'd gotten the same email, and in that it said, you know, the situation's changing rapidly, and we're going to close everything down, and if you stay here, you're going to be stuck in your room, and there's going to be food, but you're not going to be able to go get it, we'll have to deliver it to you, and unless you're homeless, it would be highly recommended that you leave as soon as possible, Wednesday at the latest, so I was like, just go now. What are you waiting for? Come on. They don't know how to handle it. They're not safe. They don't feel secure. They don't feel like they know what to do. And I do feel like I know what to do. So my big feeling is get on the plane and come home. You'll be fine. Alright, what about you, honey? Um... The niggling feeling that I've been getting uh, for a few days now is one of, it's, it's really difficult to express in words, uh, but I'll do my best. It has to do with the restructuring of the human collective here on the planet and how what to do, basically, singularly myself, but also organizationally, organize stuff, you know, a lot of people are already organizing things on meditations, high frequency things and all that, and that's part of it. There's also magic, there's also spells, there's also mystical tools that we can use to take back this planet and turn it back to its natural high frequency format of experience and for some reason I have certain knowledge and wisdoms and skills that can facilitate that for us, all of us here on this planet and I've been pulled into, my focus of attention has been pulled into locations that have been surprising to me um, dealing with individuals with whom I haven't had not a moment of interest in or attention on, not, not one moment of it and now they're in my field of awareness and it, my niggling feeling is that it's time to pull back the veil of forgetfulness and, and also in inability to do the programs that stop us doing the high frequency stuff, just taking over basically um, and just doing it, right, for us all to do it. So that's been my niggling feeling, I've been sitting with it, I've been wondering how to approach it and I suppose this card is very clear, uh, time to act act on that niggling feeling so I'll be doing probably will be working on that for the next few days to see how we can one of my fortes I suppose one of my, one of my superpowers is to create very simple very simple tools that are extremely powerful very very effective that totally change people's lives so I'm going to step into that superpower as much as I can and see if I can create for us the tools that we can use to create that right now on this planet. Roll Be back that veil. Remember last night with the angels? In order to have the light dark experience, one of the things that was required was forgetting. Yeah, so in the book that we were exploring in the book club at Walk With Me Now. Um, interview, one of, with an <laughs> interview with an angel. Interview with an angel. Interview with an angel. So, <laughs> speak up, man. I'm not talking you. loud. <laughs> it's your ears, honey. I can't hear you. You have to speak up louder. Okay, I'll speak louder. Thank you. Was that in order for the light dark paradigm to exist, 
we need to pull a really thick veil in front of our eyes. And now it feels to me, the niggling feeling is saying, make it possible to pull that veil out. All of us have that capacity. We all have that capacity. But one of the firewalls is the words, I don't want to. That's one of the firewalls. So what I'm going to be sitting on and acting on my niggling feeling would, will be to create the tools or very simple tools that we can all use to pull that veil off of our eyes and awareness fields so that we can step into that lucid capacity of reality creation. That's it. Wow, that's, a, that's an impressive card. Well, that's my needling feeling. <laughs> Alright, so next we're going to ask Gaia. Yes, Gaia, what should we focus on for the next two weeks? She given us snow today. Gaia has given us snow today. Which is pretty cool because snow is like pristine clean. <laughs> it's really weird too because it's March, middle of March, right? We're not at a high um, altitude. Al altitude. We're not even at a high latitude. We are in no, we're middle of southern Oregon, or yeah, Washington, I mean. Washington, southern Washington. And um, it's snowing. <laughs> so, global warming, what? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cold. <laughs> it's snowing in Portland when Cameron landed. Yeah, it's snowing in Portland, Oregon. He is laughing because he just came from Hot California. sunny Cali. California. All right, let's have a look, see what Gaia would like to for us to focus on. So I'm putting the card back and I'm going to shuffle. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is that we're, I'm connecting with Gaia now. That will be the first click, okay, so and it's shuffling, I'm shuffling. At noon we do the Via Gaia thing. Oh yeah, so noon every day we be Gaia at noon. Pacific time, so actually wherever you are in the world at noon you can be Gaia. So let's be Gaia. Okay, I got the click. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gaia, her energy is so freaking amazing. Okay, Gaia. And our question, Larry, would you like to speak it out loud? What shall we focus on for the next couple of weeks? During this time of, you know, excitement. <laughs> All right. So I'm focusing on Gaia. I got her click. Looking at the question. What's a good thing to focus on for the next couple of weeks? Yes. What should we focus on for the next two weeks during this chaotic change, crisis? For some people it's exciting, for me it's very exciting. It's quite interesting, it's quite... Really very interesting. interesting, very exciting. For other people it's very scary, it's a crisis. There's no soup, there's no toilet paper. Right. There's no bleach. So what does Gaia have to say for us? just trying to click on the question still. Okay. I'm still shuffling. I uh, concentrate on it for the next two weeks. Alright, got it. That's clicked. Alright. And now the third click would be the card. Got it. Click, click, click. Alright, let's have a look, see what the card is. That one looks pretty impressive. <laughs> so Gaia... Like? Alright, 
I'm going to describe the card. <laughs> First of all, I have to tell you the card is the card that says no. <laughs> Gaia says no. <laughs> Don't focus on Wait. the next two weeks. Postpone. <laughs> Pause. Say no. Say no. Say no. <laughs> Say no. 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 I will not subscribe to this. Okay, and the card is super interesting. It's like a triangle or a pyramid in the background with a night sky, with lightning coming down into some steps with two pillars on the sides and two mountain tops or two mountains Looks on like the sides. Looks like the kind of pyramid you would go to the top of for a nice, beautiful sacrifice. Yeah. Looks like the kind of a pyramid that I walked up on myself and stabbed my own self in the heart. All right. And then slapped my head and said, oh, Okay. Oops. So I'm getting the goosebumps on this card. Let me just read you the explanation for it, okay? Okay. Okay. Wait, postpone, pause, say no. You are being called to either pause or say no. Saying yes to something that isn't in alignment with you will drain your energy and your time. Hold out for a congruent, aligned, 100% yes. Often, when we are looking for guidance to make a decision, it can be frustrating not to move into a clear and considered action. However, timing is everything, and not receiving clear guidance is actually guidance in itself. We all go through times known as waiting periods. These times are crucial for our body to regenerate, the new path to formulate, and the universe to be creating things on our behalf. Begin creating things on our behalf. We don't need to be plowing forward all the time to move forward. A potent congruent yes when the time is right will put you ahead leaps and bounds. Don't force things now, just because it seems like the only option. Take a breather and wait. The waiting is actually very productive, for when the time for movement comes, you will be ready to dive right in. Use this time to regenerate and ponder what you truly want. Consider the options. If the options are not clear, don't fear, because this time is a gift. Use it to tend to your garden and take a rest, to take a moment from your busy life to clear the decks and prepare for the time in the future. But come spring, clarity will bloom and you will have the, res the reserves, space and drive to say yes and act and move quickly. So say no, postpone or wait. It feels to me like that guy is saying, chill. Chill, relax. Relax, Go wait. Home, don't have to go to work, kids are there. What? Hey. What did you say? Yeah, relax, stay home, kids are there, don't have to go to work, just take this time to be there. Just take this time to be there. And recharge. And be ready for that moment that will come in spring, which isn't too far away. Where the uh, choice will be completely resident for what to do. Yes. So the human collective says, answer the little niggle, and Gaia says, wait and relax and chill. Yes. <laughs> Follow your intuition. And for the time being, wait. Postpone. So the other, um, through the imagery and also the, um, feeling that I got when reading the card the other thing about no what I felt was say no to fear and I think part of this card said that exactly right I thought that that's why the uh, my impression of the card too was that right now there's a dark spell type energy that's 
tempting to be cast upon the planet? And the answer to that is no. That's not yeah. going to work. Yeah. So, you don't really need to do anything. High frequency humans. Just relax. Relax and be high frequency, right? Relax Process and be your high fear. Frequency. So, yeah, it feels like that. It feels like say no to fear. Just wait, bide your time, and don't die from a place of fear. Right. And also say no to this bullshit, man. <laughs> Pardon my French, but come on. <laughs> just say no to this stuff. Just just say no. <laughs> so that's good. That's clear. Yeah. Don't panic. Just chill, man. Chill. Cool. I wonder what the Lemurians might have to say. Do you want to do the third card now? The yeah. Lemurians? I think we got Gaia down. She's not accepting those dark spells. Gaia's not partaking in this stuff. They, they're artificially created panic. Yeah, with pyramids and sacrifice. Oh. Yeah, pyramids, sacrifice, technology, magic. The answer is no. The answer is no. Alright. When you see all this stuff and all the fear in the news and everything, in your mind you can create a circle, a red circle and put a cross on it. It's like, no, that's what I use for the yes-no agreements. So the yes is a green tick and the no is a circle with an X on it. No. Okay. Lemurians. Let's see what the Lemurian Collective, High Frequency Collective, would like to have us focus on for the next two weeks. Okay, I'm shuffling the cards. The first thing it is that I'm doing is connecting to the Lemurian Collective to use these cards to give us the message. Shuffling. We swept our portal yesterday, our Lemurian portal. We still need to place our quartz. We need more quartz. Okay, I've got a click for the Lemurian Collective. Now the question. What should we focus on for the next two weeks during this period of change in the human collective? Okay, I've got a click for yes on the question. I've got the question connected to the Lemurians. Now I'm shuffling the cards for a click on the card. like to tell us? Oh my goodness. Wow. That's an impressive card. We actually got two. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Sneakers. <laughs> they got a lot to say. Sneakers have a lot to say, man. <laughs> oh. Okay, these cards are very, very, very fascinating. One of them literally looks like a portal to Lemuria. It totally is. <laughs> exactly what it, it looks like. It literally looks like a portal to Lemuria. And um, it's called the Crumbling. 
and the sentence is what are you clinging on to and it's like a, like a, some sort of I would say it's like a tower uh, building and there's like this path through the middle of it like the, 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 the building is splitting, splitting into two with light coming in through the top and on the other side of the tower which is all crumbly and breaking all over the place it's this most beautiful valley on earth like beautiful valley with full of flowers and a river and it's gorgeous really really beautiful and then the second card is called don't dim to fit in <laughs> which is really fascinating also and it says how are you dimming your light in order to fit in and it has a little pyramid uh, three ladies again and a pyramid with the eye on it with the light coming out of it yeah it's really fascinating okay let's do the first one first the crumbling Crumbling. What are you clinging on to? There is a shift happening right now. No kidding. <laughs> you wouldn't say. Where anything inauthentic can no longer survive. Isn't that fascinating? Yep. The artificiality of the world can no yep. longer survive. Relationships, jobs, social structures, anything built on shaky ground is destined to tumble down. <gasps> what? Oh my gosh. It's happening to bring you back home to who you truly are, both individually and to society as a whole. So you can live a life that is in alignment with who you truly are. That's beautiful. So be more perfect. I know. See this as an opportunity to be who you truly are. When you're in the thick of it, it can feel like a personal attack from the universe. Have faith because the difficult times will be your defining moments. You will be reborn in the fire. You're being called to surrender. Stop trying to hold it all together. To loosen your grip. To let the crumbling occur. It may be difficult at first, but in the end, the sooner you let go, the sooner the rebirthing will occur. What are you trying to hold together? What are you doing your best to avoid? How are you trying to pretend everything is okay? You have what it takes to allow what is falling away to tumble and fall. Once the tower has crumbled, you will be able to rebuild your home on solid ground with mighty foundations and a view that is so magnificent that it will take your breath away each time, each new morn. Kali, the goddess of destruction, and Black Madonna are with you now. Lay it all on their altar. They can hold it all. <laughs> Work your light in grey. What are you clinging to for fear of nothing coming to take its place? Pretty profound. Yeah, that's a really good card. What does it mean to you? Well, it means the old's crumbling away. Don't try and keep Hold it together. Hold on to it, right? Let it go. Let it go. You can't have a rebirth yeah. without a first having a death. Right. It's gotta die before it can be born. Yeah. Yeah. So don't don't cling on to things. Don't try to go back to the old. Embrace this shift, this change, and this opportunity. Opportunity. To make a yeah. This opportunity to create something new with your life it's quite massive don't dim it to fit in it yeah <laughs> and shine <laughs> and shine 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 many of you have do dim your light in order to fit into work or social structures your family your friends uh, your country whatever so, you know you dim your light to fit in it's, but now is the time to stop that now it's the time to just shine and be who you really are without apology. Yeah. You'll 
find, probably, you'll find there will be a lot of people looking up to you. Okay, let's see the second card that the Lemurians pulled out. Don't seem to fit in. in order to fit in. Don't dim your light to accommodate someone else's smallness. We are all born to shine but big and bright. The universe is expanding and you're part of the universe, so expanding is part of, who you, of your nature. If someone makes you want to retract, notice and slowly back away. They're not for you and you're not for them. Better yet, Find it within yourself to expand and shine your light anyways. Flowers don't open and close according to who's walking by. <laughs> they open and show their beauty regardless. If others don't want to be around you or, make you, the, or you make them uncomfortable, it's because you're shining light on the fact that they're dimming to fit in. By choosing to shine bright, you may just inspire them to turn on their light too. Or not, keep your light on anyway. All relationships are essentially an energetic agreement. The moment one person decides to start rising up and allowing the light to shine, it changes the energetic agreement and can create some waves. That's completely normal. The relationships that are meant to last will adapt to the change in energy. Others won't because they're likely born under the pro proviso of I love you as long as you don't shine brighter than me. That's okay. Not all people are meant to be in your life forever. But the lessons they teach us can still live on. Work your light inquiry. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? So Larry, how are you dimming your light in order to fit in? Well, I'm not, of course. You're not, of course? Not. You're not? No, I would never. You would never dim your light? Oh, I stand tall and proud. Loud and proud, baby. <laughs> Alrighty. How about you? Um, in order to fit in, not so much. But yes, in a way to uh, um, make people more comfortable around me. Yeah. I have done that and I do that on a daily basis. I dim my energy field, what you might call my light in order to make others more comfortable because when I shine bright it's kind of uncomfortable for other people yeah but maybe um, maybe it's time to stop that maybe it's time to stop that and yeah. let those who are uncomfortable to uh, process what's making them uncomfortable I suppose yeah I think now individuals are mature enough to be able to do that so and again, this is another topic we mentioned and talked about yesterday on our book club at Walk With Me Now. It totally was. Because in that chapter, the last chapter of the Interview with an Angel book, I did spend some time just going into my true form and energy field and expressing that without any stops. And um, as I was feeling into that, it felt like, yeah, I'd really like to do that again, and if we do, if we all do it, everybody who's listening to this podcast, we all do that, we all just shine bright, even if it's for a few seconds a day, <laughs> I think it will make a huge difference to everybody on the planet, actually. I think it's part of that toolkit. I think it's part of that, that um, course or exercise or whatever. Yeah, the tool to lift the veil so that we can step into a really high frequency empowered social structure that supports and nurtures 
everyone in it by everyone in it. Right? Right. Yeah. Oh, it's really snowing now. Oh my gosh. Is that rain and snow or is it just snow? It's rain and snow. Wow. Do you have any last words for our listeners? Sometimes they are so spot on. Actually, every time so far they've been so spot on. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, we'll put them on Walk With Me Now. Yeah, we'll put the pictures on Walk With Me Now. If you want to see them, you know where to join. <laughs> and we'll put the, uh, uh, I suppose the, the names of the cards in the podcast. Yeah, we'll so say. You can we'll look them up, get yeah. some if you want. Exactly, yeah. We'll put the name of the cards that we used on the podcast. These aren't the only cards. Let me tell you. We I have, have four decks myself. Yes. yes. But and these I have are a few your personal ones that are one of my personal right ones. Now. One of my personal ones. Yeah, we do have several decks. That is true. So don't think this is the only deck that works. <laughs> no, there's a. Uh, there's a few, well, my personal favorite right now is the Gaia ones, you know, the, the larger ones. Yeah. Those are the Enchanted Forest ones. Those are so gorgeous. Oh, my God. They're so beautiful. Wow. I love those. Those are my favorites right now. Okay, well, I think we have our March orders for the next couple of weeks. We do. That's your niggle. <laughs> uh, chill out, relax. Let the uh, time happen. No, the guy is not accepting no dark spells on her. Right, yeah. And uh, don't dim, fit in. And um, one more, what was one more? Um, oh, the crumbling. crumbling. Yeah. Let it crumble, baby. Let it crumble. Let it crumble. Don't, don't hold on to stuff, you know? Don't try and fix it and put it back together. Just back let it was. Old stuff crumble. I think we can agree that society, as it has been structured up to this point, is not really working for us, right? We can all agree to that. It's not really working for the human collective. And allowing it to collapse and crumble is a good thing. And releasing and letting go of things that are not working is a good thing. And then we can build the things that do work high frequency social structures that work and are highly supportive that you can support and are supportive of you. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. <laughs> and thank you for listening to this point and we'll see you next time. This is Driving to the Res. Portland edition. Via Portland. <laughs> <laughs> With Larry and Inelia. <laughs> <laughs>